Hey guys, just so you know, I made a second channel where I'm putting all my Twitch streams, so if you missed any of them and want to watch me play some silly games, head over to Cosmonaut Variety Streams. The link is in the description, bye bye. Cosmonaut Quickie! All right, look, I know I haven't been making very many videos lately, but that's because I got a copyright strike. I know, this is a sad day. Paramount's trying to take me down. I've been at war with them for months now. You guys do not know how hard I'm fighting to make sure that we can review Transformers movies. But despite all of that, I made sure to go and see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 because this was my last hope for a good MCU movie. In fact, I'd say it's so good that it's gonna make any subsequent Marvel movies look like dog shit in comparison. And that really shouldn't be a surprise. James Gunn hasn't made a bad superhero movie yet, but the MCU has such a noticeable decline in quality in the last few years, and for a second, I was getting a little worried. But luckily, it seems like Marvel really let James Gunn do whatever he wanted. The movie is darker, weirder, and it even has an F-bomb in it, which is pretty shocking. And really, this has been the first Marvel movie in a long time that hasn't felt like it was churned out from a factory. Honestly, it's a little hard to watch this movie and not think about how generic and bland the previous Marvel movies have been. On one hand, it doesn't feel fair to compare them, but if you're like me and you watch all of them, it's pretty noticeable that this is on another level. It reminded me that superhero movies can look good and feel good to watch. And that's kind of appropriate because the first Guardians movie made me feel like that too. It's always been a series that has felt distinct and separate from the rest of the MCU, and that's a big reason why this movie works for me. It's clearly directed with genuine care. A lot of the shots are quite good. The emotional moments hit just as hard as they need to, and the action, while sparse, is very visually impressive. There's a particular single-take action scene that has more style and energy than any other MCU action scene. However, this movie didn't have me hooked the whole time. While the humor isn't as oppressive as it was in, say, Peacemaker, there are many times where Gunn interjects humor where I don't find it to be particularly necessary. I understand that you want to balance out the dark subject matter with some humor, but the jokes just don't always land. I'll also say there are some weird editing choices. This is something that most people don't notice or care about, and that's fine. But like, for instance, in the aforementioned long take action scene, it is immediately followed by the most jarring and awkward cut. And it was very disappointing to see that. And there are a lot of moments like that where I feel like a scene maybe got cut, and it just leads to moments where things don't exactly line up the way that they should. I also had issues with some of the story elements. The fallout from Infinity War kind of hampers this movie's narrative a little bit. I know alternate Gamora wasn't initially part of James Gunn's plan for the trilogy, and he really did do the best job that he could with what he was given, but it's very distracting to know that Gamora wasn't intended to die in someone else's movie, and it's frustrating that we can't see what Gunn had planned for the character. And the last thing that really didn't stick the landing for me was the inclusion of Adam Warlock. It really felt like this post-credits cameo from Guardians 2 was meant to go somewhere else because this is a pretty important character and he really gets sidelined here. Like outside of the inciting incident, he doesn't have anything to do in this narrative. I was expecting a lot more from him and I was left a little confused and dissatisfied with his portrayal in this movie. But despite all of those minor grievances, I really did love the character work in this movie. The main villain is delightfully over the top and hateable, and I think he worked really well here. It's nice to have a villain with goals that you can agree with, but sometimes it is just as effective to have a guy who's evil as shit. A guy that you want to see get murdered. And this movie pulls that off very well. And I'll also say that the character work for the Guardians themselves is really on another level. Every single character gets multiple moments to shine, and it's clear that Gunn really loves these characters. This is the most fleshed out a superhero team has felt. They genuinely feel like a family, and the story gives each of them a satisfying send-off. I won't spoil any of them, but just know that if you have a favorite character in the Guardians of the Galaxy, you are going to be satisfied with how they get sent off in this movie. Honestly, for me, what really stands out is that this is the first Marvel movie that's felt like an actual ending. And that is a good thing. Stories are supposed to end in order to be satisfying, and that's something that superhero franchises don't usually believe in. This movie is sad and miserable and disturbing when it needs to be, but at the same time, it's very charming and heartfelt. 
This has been a series about ugly, unwanted creatures learning how to love and be loved in return, and it's clear that Gunn and his entire team went into this movie with passion and a desire to end their story in a satisfying way. And I really do think they pulled it off. James Gunn is great at taking C-list characters and breathing new life into them, and while his time at Marvel may be over, I'm very excited to see what else he can do. So I'm going to go ahead and give this movie a 9 out of 10. Finally, some delicious fucking food.